Today we will read the verse from Shishi Radhara Sudanidi about the fulfillment of a maid servant's desire. So that's a nice subject. I hope you will all help with your feelings. Then it is more rich. Oh, Sri Radhi, when can I fulfill my desires by lovingly painting leaf pictures on your cheeks? Eyeliners around Sorry, my phone is going on my mouth. Eyeliners around your eyes. Lipsticks on your lips. Vermilion on your breasts. And red leg on your toes. When you are nervous about your new meeting with Krishna, Oh, Shri Radhe, when can I fulfill my desires by lovingly painting leaf pictures on your cheeks? Eyeliner around your eyes, lipsticks on your lips, vermilion on your breasts, and red leg on your toes when you are nervous about your new meeting with Krishna. And the name of the purport is called The Fulfillment of a Maid Servant's Desires. So that's all very interesting because it's about the desires of the maidservants. So that is our direction, our inspiration. And we can feel what are desires of the maidservants. And how can I develop these desires. I want to decorate Swamini. I want to be so close. Gurudev always mentions that for decoration you have to be close, very close. You're holding the cheek when you put eyeliners. Means you have a very direct vision of Swamini. And uh, of course, I don't have this qualification yet, but my good Eve is giving me hope. All Vaishnavas are giving me hope that this day will be mine also. One of these days. And what I like about this verse, it will come it's in the commentary of Baba. He's writing, While Radhika embraces Krishna as a golden creeper and twines a tamala tree, she becomes agitated by desires for union with Krishna once more. So Baba is jumping right into the Leela. There's no, nothing in between. There's nothing about the sadhakadeya here. It's all about the spiritual transcendental senses of Radha and Mohan and the desire of a maidservant, how to please and how to serve Srimati Radhika in her desires. Because actually, 
we could say it's about the maidservant's desires, but they are not separate. Desires of a maidservant and desires of Shimati Radhika are not different. They are eternally connected and they are always in harmony. Even so much so that the maidservant, she can also know the desires before Swamini herself knows the desires. That is a very sweet exchange of selfless divine love between our Swamini and all the Dasis. So I like this picture because all of these are the divine pictures that are painted by the prayers of our dear uh, Sripad, Prabodhananda Sarasvati Thako, in his eternal Swarup as a maidservant of Swamini, and also our dear and most revered Srila Anantadas Babaji Maharaj, also is tuning and helping us to also feel in this way, to learn how to feel the Dasis, Srimati Radhika and Mohan, all their leelas, all their exchanges, and how to enter into that meditation myself. And that Radhika, when she is embracing Krishna, that comparison, we have heard a lot of times, a golden creeper entwines a tamala tree. You see, tamal trees are very stiff. They are dark and they have a heart, you know, kind of like they go up and they are stiff. They are not so movable. And Shimati Radhika is the creeper. So I was thinking when I was meditating in this picture, Shimati Radhika is the golden creeper. She is so flexible, right? She is entwining him. She is alluring him. She is the golden creeper of his all of his desires, of all of his wishes and the fulfillment of everything that he could ever dream of. Because he is, you know, so happy when he can forget that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He wants someone who makes him forget everything. And that's why Goloka Vrindavan is so special. There, Krishna, he is just a sweet cowherd boy that is enchanted by all the inhabitants of Vrindavan with their love and with their games, with all their plays, not concerning about themselves, but just about the happiness of this cowherd boy. And so when Shimati Radhika embraces this beautiful blue Mohan. She is entwining him. Entwining means if you go into the garden, there are many creepers, they are entwining other plants. And they are quite intense in their entwining. Even if you are a gardener and you try to somehow get this, you know, separated, it's very difficult. So in the same way, Shimati Radhika is embracing her Mohan, who becomes stunned. He becomes very stunned. You know, the Tamil tree, he is also stunned. He doesn't move. He becomes stunned. Because in that mo moment, she is the one also who is getting ready to make him stunned. He becomes very unmovable even. It is says, it said here that she becomes agitated by desires for union. Once more means they were just together. So you see, that is the passion of Srimati Radhika. And he becomes stunned. He is amazed. He is overwhelmed. And she is golden. This color golden is so special because it's the prem. It expresses her golden love, 
and her pure desires for his satisfaction. And it goes so far that even Krishna, who is the one that usually makes everyone happy, he is so overwhelmed that he cannot move anymore. Usually, everyone becomes overwhelmed by him and by his beauty and by his charm. But in this moment, when Shrimati Radhika is golden and entwining him with her golden love, with her Mahabhav, with that highest, highest, purest divine feelings, then he becomes motionless. Because her emotion, her feelings are so new for him. They are always fresh and always new. And Baba is mentioning it. That uh, what is the feeling of this passionate girl? Anuragavati, the passionate girl. And their meeting is always ever fresh. That is Rupa Goswami's um, explanation that will follow now. This desire to resire to, to the, the union for Krishna once more returns always again in the heart of an Anna Anuragavati, a passionate girl. Shimati Radhika is this passionate girl. She has, and I have heard this from Gurudev a lot of times, ten times more passion and power in the love games than Mohan. That's why he becomes stunned. That's why he becomes motionless by the power of all of her emotions. And it's always again stronger. This desire returns always again in the heart of an Anuragavati and is always again stronger. Means that the ocean of Srimati Radhika's desire are always increasing. It's getting higher and higher. The waves are getting higher and higher. And now comes the quote of Srila Rupa Goswami of Ujjwala Nilamani, Stai 102. Interesting also the name, Stai. It can only be experienced in the Stai feelings, in the fixed feelings of someone who really wants to feel Srimati Radhika's service. That attachment which is experienced as ever fresh, as if it was never experienced before, is called anurag by the learned. So it's ever fresh, it's never stale. Like in this material world, the problem is that everything becomes boring after some time or stale, or like a repetition of something, chewing the chewed. But there, in this realm of transcendental senses, of the supreme loving couple, and their helpers, their dasis, everything is always fresh, always new, and that is called anurag. Because there is a mutual exchange of love that has no beginning and no end. In this material world, which is identifying, you know, by matter, by bodies and looks, everything is so beautiful in the beginning. We also can experience some kind of anurag. But it will not last very long unless we can see each other with spiritual eyes and feel each other with spiritual 
senses, feelings, and soul consciousness. So that is the beginning of our journey, that we get also some feelings of freshness, some feelings of eternity in this material body. It is possible, it is even a gift to have by the mercy of Sri Guru and Sri Guranga and the Vaishnava service that we experience ourselves as eternal beings. And it will show in our expressions, in our words, and in our activities and loving exchanges with each other. That is the influence of the mercy of the Dasi Bhav, the service mood. And it has this effect on our even material bodies that we, we always have fresh energy. We never feel empty or tired. The body may, you know, the body maybe cannot follow sometimes. The body needs a rest. The body needs rejuvenation, you know, like recreation. But from the soul level, from the Dasi level, is always Sevaras, always eagerness to do more service. And Srimati Radhika and Gurudev will reciprocate with that. They give us possibilities to do sweeter and sweeter services and not on the bodily platform but on the platform of anurag it seems fresh my god i get another service it's fresh i don't feel tired i feel refreshed by my association with my brothers and sisters I feel refreshed listening the sound vibration of our, you know, achayas of Radhara Sudanidis verses, Elapakushmanjali's verses. I feel fresh. That is mercy, this refreshment, this anurag that Srimati Radhika is the source of. She is the source of all freshness, of all ever fresh feelings and love. So if we can come into that service a little bit in our lives, that is a result that things will become fresh and not boring or stale, but refreshed. <laughs> That attachment which is experienced as ever fresh, as if it was never experienced before, is called anurag by the learned. Therefore, the Nava Sagama, or new meeting, mentioned in the text is not the first meaning, or purvarag. So there's also another stage that has been explained. It's called the Purvarag, means when they are meeting for the first time. It's like when they fell in love. But in this text, or in this feelings, they have already met. They are experienced in meeting each other, although it is always fresh and like the first time. And that Baba is ex explaining Although Shimati is naturally opposed to meeting Shyama Sundara, Vamya Bhava Vatti, she is more grave than millions of oceans. And she is still eager to meet him again. So these are very interesting contradictions in that sentence. She is naturally opposed means she is always shy. 
she always wants to give him a hard time. She is not easy to catch. She is not. Krishna or Mohan has to endeavor. And that makes him refreshed. He likes that. And at the same time, she is more grave. She is so grave that she can She cannot be understood. She will not speak much. Like a deep like a deep ocean of feelings. But at the same time, she is still eager to meet Mohan again. She is all these qualities at the same time. So that's, I feel, I don't know how you feel, please share. These are so nice qualities about Swamini that are coming to the maidservants' feelings and encouraging us to run behind her, to serve her, and like praying, when can I fulfill my desires? To lovingly painting leaf pictures on your cheeks, eyeliner around your eyes, lipstick on your lips, vermilion on your breasts, and red leg on your toes when you are nervous about your new meeting with Krishna. So isn't that also amazing? She is so grave. She has so much experience. At the same time, she is nervous about her first meeting again. Because it's the quality of the spiritual senses that they are never exhausted. They are always experienced in a new way. And so she Radhika also when she meets Mohan, she is nervous because she feels, I have never seen that person before in my life. It's interesting. So we have these two or three more seemingly contradictive feelings. At the same time, she is always in Mamiya Bath. She's always like, no, I don't want to see you. What do you want from me? She's like making him chase her. She makes him more excited like that. She's churning his emotions so that she is that golden creeper embracing him with all her words with all her glances and with all her gestures. She is a very experienced lover in that verse. But at the same time, she is nervous and she is grave and she is full of desires. And these desires are stronger and stronger like Anuraga Vati uh, from a passionate girl. And we know these, all these qualities Shimati is experiencing or expressing not for herself, but for the pleasure of her Lord, of her Mohan. And that's very interesting because the maidservant also feels the same for Swamini. When she is feeling, oh, when can I fulfill my desires to paint the leaf pictures on your cheeks? It's not like, oh, I want to do it because I want to do it. No, because it will make you happy and it will create the mood, Swamini. I want to create your mood for more passion, for more fulfilling of the desires of your Mohan. Let me uh, assist you. Please, first you make me like you and you help me to get your moods with the help of your maidservants and then I will assist you to make to create more happiness and more smoothness or excitement. All the feelings that are needed to create 
happiness for Swamini and for her Mohan. So, Radhe Radhe, my dears. Anyone would like to share on this? No, don't be so shy now. It's a passionate verse. <laughs> it's a verse about passionately serving Swavani so that she she can also fulfill her desires, which are the desires to make her Mohan more stunned, to make him more overwhelmed. Don't be so shy now, Gauravani. <laughs> I know it's not so easy to, in the situation when the others are just there to hear and to learn. So, of course, you need some some input from others also, some feelings. So I'm ready to serve you in that way. But I need your mercy for that, from all of you. So actually, what I was uh, contemplating about was Actually, the qualities of Radharani, they are making this king of relishes always crazy in every moment. It's so astonishing that although Swamini is the highest qualified person to serve her Mohan, she herself is thinking, will I be able to really satisfy him? Who am I? I'm just one girl, and there are so many in Braj, much more qualified than me. So will it be possible for me to make him happy? And alone this quality of Radharani will make Mohan mad, completely mad, because how such a quality cannot make a lover mad when you see that this person you are loved by is the most qualified person to fulfill all desires you would not even think of. But this person in the same time is so shy and so um, what? And in the same time, she is so uh, eager to serve her beloved. So actually all these feelings which are fighting in Swamini for the first place, like I'm shy, I cannot do, but I want but I cannot because there are so many rules I have to break and I shouldn't make him so easy. I should give him more taste. I should make it a little bit more troublesome for him. All these qualities fighting in her. 
are making him crazy constantly. And of course, they are always fresh. How could a person possibly get all these qualities in one frame at once? Even Krishna cannot. So that's amazing and never fresh and alone her lavanya will melt his mind completely. So I'm sorry I cannot really put it into English words right now, everything I which is going on in the heart and in the mind. But I think it's it must be much more uh, um, in the same mood for Mohan. It's not so easy for him to put everything clearly to understand, actually. He will be completely overwhelmed by fresh feelings. Jai Thank you, Gauravani, so sweet. You know, I have a friend here in this community where we live. And whenever I meet her, she tried to ask me, don't you think that it's not good to speak about these things? We have to hide it all. And I, I always like look a little bit bewildered. And then, of course, I say, yes, sure, yes. But then I think, my God, Baba, he's going so straight on in this commentary. Why? Because if we don't hear it, if we don't meditate on it, and not only now in the Zoom class, but during the day, whenever the mercy comes, the smaran, to remember what we have talked about and then we always stay on the bodily platform of life. It is very important to have something of these drops of mercy in my chitta, even if I only can desire it, even if I have no you know, close or deep realizations, even visualizations. But just to think about it, to hear about it, and to contemplate it all together with you, I feel very happy and thankful that we have this opportunity to share about the feelings of Swamini and how I could possibly tune in. And I remember last week, in one of the Zooms, there was the question. I think maybe it was questions and answers on Wednesday. And they asked Gurdiv, how can we um, tune into your feelings? How can it be accomplished? How can, because we have all these songs about Guru Tattva, make me like you, make me like you, Gurudev. And always I thought, how can I be so audacious, you know, so unverschämt, that I think I should become like you. But it is important to tune into the feelings of each other, especially of Gurudev, who will tune us with the feelings of his service and his relation to Swamini. We always tune in with each other, with all the people 
that we are together with in our lives, with all the souls, we have to tune in. Otherwise, harmony is not possible. And otherwise, we cannot be a good team. Whether it be in the household, in the garden, in the school, in our jobs, in any of our relationships. So Gurudev made it very clear that day. And I thought, wow, thank you, Gurudev. He said, the Guru will make you tuned. It's his mercy. But my desire, of course. So the same way, when I try to be in my spiritual consciousness, first of all, as a soul, and then as a Dasi of Srimati Radhika, I have to tune myself into her feelings. And that's what we do when we are reading these verses, trying to tune in. Maybe now today Gurudev is hiding, but I feel his presence so strongly. I feel his tuning so presently, so mercifully, guiding us. Even if others say this is not the right subject to talk about, not the right topic to discuss publicly, or whatever. Because for me personally, I need this tuning in my life. in my meditation, in my relations, so that the pearls, the loving pearls of that service that we do together here also in these Zooms can be a necklace of all our endeavors to hang this, to, you know, to give this beautiful mala or necklace to Gurudev so that Guru Manjari can hang this necklace on Swamini. And if I want to be a spiritual Dasi, a person that is not, is living in this world, but is not out of this world anymore so much. Yes, this world is beautiful, I am thankful. But my home is with the Dasis. Yes, Radhe? I think they are right. We should not talk about this. <laughs> because what we are doing, we are trying to go together in Bahava Deha. This is not talking. This is not exchange on the platform of mind or of bodily platform. So we not just talk about it. What we really do is a person like you is giving us a feeling to dive in. To dive in this feeling, a person like Ananda Das Babaji is giving us actually the platform. Then another Kinkari is trying to help us to feel what Ananda Das Babaji is actually offering us. So it's more a contemplation, a feeling contemplation. It's more a diving school into the feelings. What feelings are shared here? So it's really not something to talk about. <laughs> So they are right. Thank you, Gauravani. It was so much fun when you were here last week and we were cooking. I had so much fun. <laughs> no? But Sundari, we had so much fun. <laughs> it's like an underlying 
love that is connecting us all in all activities what we do sometimes they are chaotic sometimes they are like a joke and most of the time they are not perfect but if it's done with the feeling you know to please the Vaishnavas to please Guru what counts is only that and when we are reading these verses when Swamini is passionate. Well, you know, she is a passionate girl. She is not only some goddess that's standing on the altar to give blessings. She is active. She is very active in her love to Mohan. And she wants our help in that activity. But how I can enter and how I can approach these feelings. That is my relation to all my other Dasis, to my Guru, who give me these feelings and tunes me in, into the right way so that there's some something can be received, something can be felt. And I'm always happy and lucky when so Many Vaishnavas are there to help me also tune myself. Like Gauravani, you help me to tune in the kitchen. I really love that. Your humor and your small remarks. I need that. My life is for that. May Enjoy I? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, please. Come. Yeah. Um, thank you. Prashant will, will visit us. And I'm preparing a slide, a dear show. That means I'm diving in all these pictures of our Sangha since 2012. And these intense meetings with you on Sunday feast with Goravani, Tarun, and Kalindi, Rajasundari, and with this, this three intense meetings with Gurudev. And in between, we have been in India, with all of us. And there are also the pictures of, of our initiation being initiated and and you are reading this verse and my connection to you as a Nietzsche and it's it's like syrup <laughs> what it's like syrup <laughs> syrup sweet thick rich <laughs> hmm. and Yes, I can see it with my material senses. Yes, there is a lot of things to do. It's intense, also busy working. But but for whom? It, it's it's only in this deep connection with each other, and it is celebrating. And as you said, we are reminding us with with these kind of jokes. You can't make these jokes in in any other relationship. And laughing together is, I think, deepest connection, deepest relation with each other. And perhaps more intimacy than a kiss. Laughing together. So sorry, I'm I'm diving in these feelings. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Thank you for your feelings, and you see also the memories. They are so precious. 
And I always think when the times are so intense, like now the tours and the visits, this intensity, it stays with me. It stays with all of us. These kinds of, you know, intense, I mean emotionally intense. And then this is, I can also pray that Swamini may open a vision, how intense is her feelings, that Gurudev will open his visions, how intense are his feelings, and just a drop of this, and to collect these drops, they become the pearls, the treasures in my heart. And then more and more treasures come and more and more feelings. And then when I read Vilapa Kushmanjali or Radhara Sudhanidhi, then something opens, something is shining through. They are little things, maybe not so big. But I think the beauty in life is about these little things. And to be little is such a great thing. Not to have this pressure of this to do, to be big, to do big. But the little things like joking in the kitchen when we are cooking, these are the real nectar drops. And that makes it fresh. Even in the moments when you are cooking for 15 people who are sitting on the table and the dough is still not ready. <laughs> but we have to make the designs in a special, beautiful way. That attachment which is experienced as ever fresh, as if it was never experienced before, is called Anurag by the learned. And Gurudev explains this also in such a sweet way, right? Goranga Sundara. Rag and Anurag. We feel something, we do something with the feelings, and then there comes a reciprocation. Exchange. You want to share about your exchanges? <laughs> During her amorous sports with Mohan, all of Swamini's clothes and ornaments have become misplaced and disheveled. You know, so Baba has only prepared, if you see it, that text. It's a small preparation to go again and dive. He's not wasting any time in this purport. He's like diving immediately down to the bottom. Disheveled clothes. And so she orders her beloved. She is in that mood that she orders him now because she is passionate. And when you are passionate about something, there's no excuses, there's no uh, hesitation, there is no shame. You know that in any of life circumstances, if you want something, you're passionate about it, the goal will be reached. So Swamini has reached her goal. They had another meeting, although she felt it was the first one and she was nervous about it, but she orders her Nagara now. She is in that um, Swadina Batrika feelings. Means she is now ordering Mohan. He has become completely 
overwhelmed and stunned and bewildered by her passion. And he becomes a servant of Swamini in these feelings. And she says, quickly dress me and ornament me again before my girlfriends will come here and embarrass me. She makes him happy, but at the same time, she also thinks about her girlfriends and they will make jokes. And she doesn't like that so much when they make jokes. So she wants to be prepared and she says to him, quickly, quickly, dress me. We look a little bit uh, out of order. <laughs> On Srimati's order, Nagaraj starts painting playful dolphins on her breasts in deep concentration. He says, you make me always dive in the ocean of your golden love. By painting these dolphins, He's painting his own happiness. Let me always be diving into the treasure of all your heart's feelings. You know, dolphins, they are very happy beings. They make very happy sounds when they come out of the water. You know, these sounds? like that more beautiful they are jumping out of the water and then they smile and they dive in again so Mohan also feels with Swamini your love we could is... ask Suniti why not that high is... fish we what? could ask why why he not make high fish because in the Bhagavad Gita he described himself from the fishes he is a high fish Oh, he's a shark. Oh, Gora's asking. Shark, shark, not high fish. Oh, sorry, it's German. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a dolphin, he, now he he, uh, he paint uh, dolphins on her breast and no, not sharks. So um, there we could ask. I mean, a shark is a fish and a dolphin is actually is not a fish also now. But in the in the Bhagavad Gita, he explained himself from all the fishes. Uh, he is the shark. So we could ask why he not paint her breast with a shark. And you are right when you describe the nature of a dolphin is completely different from that of a shark. And even the color of a dolphin is a little bluish. And playful. Sharks are not so much playful. They are, if a human meet a shark in the sea, then uh, the human should be fearful and careful, but dolphins are different nature, no? They have a sweet nature and they like also to be with the humans. And so dolphins could come more close than a shark. Yes, they are very playful and they always like to jump and to dive. And they are even make people laugh, laugh, smile and laugh again. I know in Hawaii they use dolphins for therapy. Mm -hmm. 
for people who have problems with the happiness in life or sick children or something. Because the dolphin can be embraced and they're very giving. They are very happy. They are smiling and they make sounds and they play mm -hmm. in the water. And they even come out of the water. When the waves are there in the water, in the sea, the dolphins jump out. That uh, sharks do not jump out. They are mainly in the deep water, but dolphins are there where the waves are. So, and we remember who is making these waves. Who is creating the waves in the oceans, in the ocean of feelings? And this is our Swamini, she is creating these waves. And the dolphins, they jump out of these waves. So we can understand the nature of these dolphins. There are like feelings what coming out of the of the wave of Mahabhav's ocean of feelings. That's a nice meditation this about these dolphins, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I think everyone loves this. These dolphins. Mm -hmm. And when Mohan is painting them on Swamini, he's also very happy and he is even getting, you know, he says he deep concentration. He really wants to serve her by by painting and by making it nicely. But of course... We, we could ask Gurudev also about these dolphins, huh? Yeah, if he's there. Gurudev, are you here? I didn't see Gurudev today. I mean, he's always here. But I think he is not online at the moment with his... with the internet. Ah, okay. And the sharks, you may have fear, but the dolphins actually, especially when they are in groups, they defeat sharks. Mm hmm Playfully. Very easily. Especially in groups. They like to be in groups and play. Like the manjaris. So who defeat always this blue boy? <laughs> you see this picture in my background. Eh? I'm also on the seaside. <laughs> Actually, it's blurred. We only see blue, uh, like impressionist style, nothing. Close. You cannot see? Mm -mm. Oh. But it's a beautiful <laughs> ocean. You are in the ocean of, of love. <laughs> we feel it, Gora. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my Gora has become mad. He's uh, getting up every morning at 3 to be in the classes with Gurudev and Vrindavan. So that's also this madness of your dolphin's heart. You want to always plunge and dive in the words of the feelings of Vrindavan, of Gurudev. Goranga, do you have dolphins in Croatia? Yes, we have dolphins in Croatia. Uh, Adriatic Sea, not wow. in the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But Actually, when you ask uh, for creation dolphins, <laughs> uh, 
I will say something uh, which is not connected with Croatian dolphins, but with Parakia Bhava mood of expression of yes. our acharyas. Actually, when we are listening and when we are reading these kind of descriptions, our acharyas are putting deep meanings because this is the description of Parakya Bhava, forbidden love. And many of their expressions by words are in codes, and they are using mm. different pictures, like this playful dolphins, to express something else, actually. Mm -mm. You very nicely explained, all of you, but I remember that uh, dolphin is the carrier of a cupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And in that way, the meaning starts to change of all sentences. Yeah. Because Nagara Raj, king of lovers, want to come and to board on these carriers of Cupid and brings him directly to his goal, to the beautiful breasts, sweet breasts of Shimata Radharani. So when he is driving, uh, uh, drawing, painting these dolphins, he is in meditation on the carrier of Cupid. So it means that his desires are so strong that he wants to repeat his experience from the last moment. And he is doing with deep concentration because he has to follow these Cupid's desires very strictly to attain his goal. With this concentration, he doesn't want to fall down from these carriers And it's completely natural that in one moment, because he is so overwhelmed with karma, that he is becoming stunned, his hand is trembling because of the influence of Cupid in his heart. And how he came in this situation? Because Radhika, Nagarimani, the jewel of all lady lovers, invited him. You paint these dolphins on my breasts. So she invited him. What she is talking, it's a one level. But in between time, when Sakis didn't came, just few mo moments before they came, she also wants to give him a pleasure. And to remember him, how both of them, just one minute ago, have been on these carriers of Cupid. So sometimes makara fish is mentioned before instead of dolphins. And it's also the same meaning, like a carriers of Cupid. So it's meant for meditation, for bhajan, and many things can open. Rather than
Yes, beautiful. So we can see or feel and hear. There are so many possibilities to meditate on this one picture and how Mohan is painting and why dolphins. What is the meaning of a dolphin and why, you know, it happened in that moment and how it is all connected so that what Gurudev also tell us that we don't rush through the sentences but we stay in the pictures of our meditations and that is called smaran. And then when this happens like now with the help of all of you beautiful souls, not only those who are speaking but those also who have big ears and they are drinking with the ears and they are speaking with the eyes and then this will be again in the day or the next days it will it will be felt i remember goravani once you were doing one verse i it's maybe already one year ago about the flamingo you know in radara sudanidi and sura torangari maybe you don't even know but for one week really every day i was in this meditation of that flamingo and how Shimate Radhika is Sura Tarangani. It was not something that uh, I was planning or, you know, it just happened. So I can feel the power of these sharings. When someone is uh, giving these feelings from their heart, we are also sharing with each other by hearing, mm -hmm. by remembering, by mercy of Gurudev to tune all of us in the tuning of Shrimati Radhika's service and also desire to to feel more. Like yes, a desire is needed. That's a good uh, uh, um, point. Uh, so uh, we can imagine our, the nature of our Swamini and uh, we know nowadays the people make uh, this uh, tattoo. No? They make tattoos on their skin, right? And uh, so many crazy things. And um, we can imagine that the mood of our Swamini is not to to get a tattoo of a shark. This is not uh, nature, and it is also not. They are not uh, compatible, no, right? But the nature of a, of a dolphin, of a playful dolphin, because she's, she ordered Krishna to do this, right? And she, she also decide which, uh, uh, which picture he should uh, paint no so and the, the playful dolphin is much different in the feeling than that of a shark and our she she feels different than uh krishna in that moment when he is painting this so he see the picture of his painting, and this is what you say, the meditation after they go separate. And he will see this picture the whole day. And she feel that painting on her breast. And Gurudev explained the breasts are Actually, the, the meaning of a breast is feeling. So then she meditate on this dolphins that are painted by Krishna, and Krishna meditate on the, the, the picture he see, because he cannot feel what she feel when he is painting this picture. But he can see the picture and he can see the breast also. So he will remember this picture the whole day. And uh, 
to enter in, in their both feelings is also beautiful to meditate on this, no? I was just thinking, who can carry Cupid? Yeah, I see that. <laughs> this is Parakyapa. Only Radharani can bring this king of relishes to mm -hmm. the place where all the relishment for him is. And in Radharani's breasts, all the relishment for this king of relishes is combined. Mm. So it's nice. the quint essence, the quint essence. So who can carry him there? Yes, that's the point. And he is like painting it and he is feeling, you carry me away all the time. <laughs> I want to be carried away by you. And that's what happens in that moment. <laughs> he tries to be, Nagara starts painting playful dolphins on her breast and deep concentration. But when he studies the beauty of these breasts, he becomes ecstatic and starts making mistakes. <laughs> but now we can think what kind of mistakes could he do? That's another beautiful meditation. So, you know, again he becomes bewildered. He cannot do it. Seeing this, Srimati orders her maidservants. You do it, quickly! He doesn't know how to do it. When the maidservants take over, Nagara is flabbergasted, you know, a little bit embarrassed and also a little bit confused because he was just carried away. Mm. And he thinks to himself, Alas, how unqualified I am. I would be blessed if I could serve as this maiden is doing. So we see and we feel again that Krishna wants to be servant of Srimati Radhika. That is already the announcement of Sri Gaura. Hari Gaura Sundara. Gauranga Sundara. It is his desire to serve in this feeling of a manjari and that he came also to fulfill. And I am always so astonished, really. Everything that they do and to please each other, it will create another beautiful situation, another, you know, unexpected desire. And it's all for service. It's not that everything they do, everything that Swamini does, everything that Mohan does, and everything that the Mandris, the Dasis do, it's all to increase each other's service, services and feelings. So when even Krishna, you know, he's so flabbergasted, it's a funny word, no? when he's so overwhelmed and so in shock that he cannot do it, even... He tries to do it, he wants to express also that he wants to be carried away, but he gets carried away in that moment. Then he is preparing to come as Gauranga, 
with the golden limbs. I can do it only, Swamini, when you give me your mercy. And I can also try to be a good Darcy, a good servant. And we know Chaitanya Chaitamrita is revealing this. When Krishna says that I am your dancing pupil, mm -hmm. you are my teacher. So then the loving maidservant first wipes the sweat drops from Shrimati's face with a towel. Well, that's another hint. <laughs> you know, while he is painting, it's not that Swami is there un unaffected by it. She also gets sweat drops because she can feel his ecstasy and she feels, oh my God, but we have, the, the girls are coming. We have to hurry. So the maidservants, they, they wipe, lovingly wipe the face of Swamini with a towel. And then starts painting beautiful pictures of leaves on her cheeks. These leaves, they could also express, I am always in Vrindavan. Because the leaves are green, right? And when Radha and Mohan meet, then Vrindavan comes into being. Vrindavan is their union, is their place of amorous feelings and sports. So these cheeks always covered by the feelings of this, the leaves of Vrindavan. Then she puts the eyeliner around her eyes and lipstick on her cherry-like lips. So here we have the whole, the whole lila now. It's the puzzle pieces that come through the verses. Baba is making the whole puzzle complete now. The whole picture. It's the whole situation. It's not that, oh, I want to do that service, Swamini. I want to do that swam service, Swamini. One could think that, but actually for me now, when I read Baba's uh, uh, revelation of his bhajan, which these words are, he's revealing his bhajan, he's sharing his bhajan with us. So it's the whole situation. They have been together before. Now they want to uh, meet again because Swamini is passionate. So then they quickly, quickly have to get ready because the girls are coming. But again, they get carried away because their love is ever fresh and it's not ever ending. And then the maidservant, she is the one who can make it quickly, perfectly and smoothly. Because Mohan, when Swamini is so passionate, when Swamini is so much giving and ordaya, we know this mood of generosity, he cannot concentrate himself on the services <laughs> other than making her happy again and again and again. And then we see this is the situation that comes now. The maidservant is doing her shringa, Swamini's shringa, Swamini's decoration. In that situation where Mohan, he's just not able to fulfill all the services that are needed at that moment. And then she expertly anoints her breast with vermilion powder and smears foot-like around her foot soles, including the toes. Swamini casts a very merciful glance at her maidservant seeing how quickly and expertly she is. And she has done all this and she tells to Shama Sundara, Did you see it now? How expert she is in dressing me? You should all learn all this from her. 
You see, now Swamini has given her blessings to Mohan. You can learn from the maidservants. You can also become a Dasi. You can taste this Manjari bar. When you come as Gauranga, together with me and together with all our Dasis, with Rupa Manjari, with Rati Manjari, with Labanga Manjari, with all of them, with Ananga Manjari, there you can learn. And at the same time, we will spread our prayer. We will, we will share our seva with the whole world, with these souls who are ready to also join us in this loving, ever-fresh game. Shyam is speechless of astonishment. He is. He is so astonished. Because how can they do it so fast and so expertly? He always gets carried away if he wants to do any service to Swami. Staring at the maidservant, he tells her with a pitiful voice, pitiful voice, It's not a joking voice. It's pitiful. He's really serious about what he says, and he has deep desires when he says it. Please teach me all these services to your Swamini also. Seeing how much mercy she receives, from the youthful couple, the maidservant floats on the waves of transcendent bliss. So, Radhe, we can see here supremacy of Manjari's Radhika's maidservants. And as Srimati Radharani is a embodiment of love, so the same thing is that her maidservants are also embodiments of love. And Radhika is embodiment of all arts of love. And it means also the kinkaris are embodiments of all arts of love. So it's very interesting the Tradika first wants to be again decorating properly to hide her loving affairs, amorous pastimes from her girlfriends. And after Mohan tried and made so called mistakes. Manjuris are decorating Radhika, but what they are doing? Who thinks they are doing? They are hiding Radhika with new ornaments, and at the same time with this Sringar, they are preparing Radhika for next meeting with Mohan. Because when they are putting the leaves on the cheeks on Radhika, when they are putting eyeliner around the eyes and lipstick on the lips, they are decorating Radhika to attract Krishna for next meeting. And it's not ordinary attraction also. They want that he kisses her. Lips are calling him. Eyes are calling him. And we know the Lilas when Krishna is kissing Radhika's eyes. And also these leaves on her cheeks are the sign of her most exalted devotion, because she is the wean of devotion. And because of that, her cheeks 
are so bright, decorated with the leaves of her Mahabal. And Krishna wants to kiss these cheeks. So Manjaris, with their decoration, paintings, they are preparing Radhika for the next meeting because they know Anuraga is so strong. It requires next and next and new and new meeting. So one purpose is to hide loving affairs of Yugala Kishore, but another purpose of Seva, because they are perfect Sevakas, is to prepare again Swamini for next meeting in some other Nikunja. And then they are putting vermilion on the breasts to attract also Mohan. Rather, I just said this. Wonderful. We can feel your meditation. I just want to add one small thing. From this verse, we can see how Krishna is very serious to become a disciple not only of Radhika but of Manjaris. He's very, very serious in this position. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dayanidhi. Nice. Yes, he is. He is very serious about what he says. It's not a joke. So nice. really feels feels that he wants to be learning like them. This is another proof why Goranga appear to relish this perfection of Seva. By learning from perfect manjaris. And spreading to all the world and all jivas this perfection, most intimate, most closed, most confidential seva. That. Rade, Rade. And again, it shows what a present Goranga gave us. Not just some bath, not just some seva, not just one thing of many. He is giving us what he relishes the most from the view of Krishna. What he relishes the most and from the view of Radha, what she relishes the most is coming in one person and giving us this seva, this highest perfect seva as a present for free and Nitai is telling us only one thing you have to pay you have to want it I just and amazed again and again, amazed. It's really amazed. Uh, it's come to me that uh, actually uh, Goranga is giving to the jivas not only the same feeling what he aspirate, aspirate but even most uh, most higher 
because uh, seems to be that manjari can feel the the both feelings so they can see even more than what they can see so it's it is also very very um, <laughs> astonishing like uh, you know mother and father they always want to do better for their kids but they want that they become even more so this kind of udarya is is even more astonished so it's it's come to me now also agree with you Danny DJ there is two last limits actually which are existing two last limits one last limit is exchange of passionate love between Radha and Muhammad and the last limit of that love is prema vilasa vivarta there is nothing more about that. And another last limit is to witness their prema vilasa vivarta. And this is the position of mantras. There, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu allowed jivas to hear about this most sublime indescribable position of Prema Vilasa Vivarta when Radha and Mohan actually out of their ecstasy they ex exchange the robes and Radhika thinks that she is a Krishna and Krishna thinks that she is Radhika before that before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, before this historical, let's say historical, conversation with Ramananda Roy, no one knew about that. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave, like Danidiji said, another limit, another present gift to witness this prema vilasa confusion vivarta and this is the sign of supremacy of manjari because sakis they couldn't witness this situation when radha and mohan are changing their robes this prema vilasa it's a hidden from them so maybe we can say two limits limits of Radha Mohan's most exalted love is revealed and to witness that and to describe this in the mood of Manjari only and then to spread to the humankind like a last limit for the jiva, for attainment of the jiva. I just, the energy inspired me. And you inspired me again. Because we not just watch it. No, we serve that. We actually are able to bring them to that state and they need us for that they need us they need our service my god this is a present like in the way Dianidi said the parents want to give you the better they want to bring you higher. So do it better than us. Serve us. Without your help, we cannot get to that state. It's 
So now we can see how is high, high position of Goswamis of Vrindavan. Rupa Goswamis, Raghunadas Goswamis. They, they, they actually bring uh, open this, this vision to others. Goranga make to them. Even in this case, they make, not Goranga. <laughs> So st still this service of the manjari, what you describe now, Goravani is, 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 we can see even in this, in this, uh, um, Sadaka Deha of the Goswamis material world. Rade. Mm. So beautiful. Tarun Baba, you have to say like a gist end word, please. I didn't hear your, your vibration today. I miss it. I'm in the mood of listening today. Beautiful. Right. Not much to say. All is said, you know. Not really much to add. Just that I say something is no need, you know. I like when I like listening also very much. Beautiful explanations by everyone. I don't think there is more need to add something. It shows the supremacy of the manjaris that even Radhika is saying to Krishna, now you now you see, now you can do it. I mean he's the supreme the personality of Godhead and they he you know this these convos, these conversations, the you can never hear them when the Sakis are there or when Lalita or Vishaka are there. So this intimacy, like you described, is really wonderful. And like everyone said, like Gora, Gora, uh, Sundara said and Goravani said and Dayanidhi said, this is the gist. This is what Mahaprabhu came to give us. And this is what we, we are trying to imbibe in our daily life with, like we also said, Sunidhi, with whomever we meet. It's not only the Vaishnavas, it's especially the Vaishnavas, but it's not only the Vaishnavas. To everyone we meet, we have to give this love and this uh, humility to everyone. Because that is the personal, that is the person of the path of the mantra is to serve everyone, to be nice to everyone. And this is really very wonderful. So I, I, I just listened and... Again, Baba is making so many, so many points about the supremacy of, of, uh, of this mantra. I, I only wanted to say you that I am, I, I personally am very much looking forward to my God brother's translation of Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi from Hari Charandas. He is in America. He translated already the Prema Bhakti Chandrika, which is very, very wonderful. Because there is a huge, huge th difference between, ba not a huge, but a, a little big difference between Baba's translation of Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi and what Advaita, Advaita, our beloved Advaita, she did. So if you read the introduction to Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, you find that uh, Advaita, she, he combined the Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi Tika from the words of my Gurudev. But not only from my Gurudev. This is a very important fact. There is the commentary of Madhusudandas Babaji, and I think one more. So I I would personally really, really love to see the only Baba's words. And he is now on his blog. I can send you the link to his blog in the Radha Dasyam group. He is only now translating. He was asking me, Tarun, uh, that the book I translate is a little different from that what Advaita Ji translated. Why, why is this happening? What is going on? Because some parts are not there and some parts are extra. And it's not, it's not a completely different book, but it's, it's, uh, what he is translating is purely Baba's words. So Advaita, he added some commentaries from two, I think two more commentaries. So I, I personally look very forward and I, I, I wish to Swamini that my God brother can finish it. So then we have really both exemplars. We have the enlarged version, you can say, which we have now, but I would much have, much rather have only Baba's words in, in one book. So that would be really, really wonderful. Like you said, Sunidhi, his expressions of bhajan, 
is here mixed with the expressions of two other great, great sadhus. So sometimes we may not even know which who, who said what, you know. Mainly it is Baba's words, but when you read the introduction, it is a mixture. It is a combination of, of, of tikas. So I'm looking forward. I think he's now at verse 18 or 19, and he is progressing steadily. And his translations, the English is very, very beautiful. I highly recommend you visit his Haricharan blogspot page where he puts the Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi there. And it's really, it's really, really cool to read only Baba's words. Don't get me wrong. The Advaita's words are fantastic. It's a combination. But for me as a disciple of Baba, I would also like to have the book solely with Baba's words only. That would be wonderful. So here we can, again, Baba is always making these points that the mantras are, are superior. So again and again and again, we find this and we can be truly happy. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Tarun. And I wish to see you again next week. I will be again more able to join. Thank you all translators. And thank you all for listening and sharing and thank you Gurudev that you are always with us. Jai Jai Shiradi!